Alright, what I'd like to do is show you guys how to determine the y-intercept, the axis of symmetry, the vertex, if it's a max or a minimum, and the domain and range for a function of f of x equals 4x squared minus 6x minus 3. Now, it's a lot of information to go ahead and work through. So the first thing that I always like to start off with is determine what my a, b, and c are. If you remember that a, quadra or a quadratic function can be given in ax squared plus bx plus c. So therefore, I'm going to determine what my a, b, and c are. So I know it can be written in the form of f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So therefore, I know that a is 4, b is negative 6, and c is negative 3. Now, when looking at this, um, if I was going to find my y-intercept, I know that the y-intercept, just to do a quick little sketch, on the y-intercept, my x value is at 0. So therefore, all I need to do is plug in 0 in for x to find the y-intercept. So I'm going to say f of x, or f of 0, because I'm actually going to plug in 0 in for x, equals 4 times 0 squared minus 6 times 0 minus 3. And therefore, I notice that really quickly it's going to be um, f of 0 equals negative 3. Therefore, my y-intercept is at the point 0, comma, negative 3. So that's my y-intercept. You just plug in 0 in for x, and you find it in. Next thing, axis symmetry. Axis symmetry is you do have to know a little formula, which the axis symmetry is you're going to take Axis so symmetry goes in the form of opposite of b over 2 times a. So all we have to go ahead and do, guys, is just take what our a, b, um, a and b are and then plug them in. So that's going to equal 6 over 2 times 4, which is equal to 6 eighths, which can be reduced down to 3 fourths. Now, to find the vertex, the formula for the vertex, and I'm going to give you the vertex lies on the axis of symmetry. So if this is the x value, so really this is actually the x value of your vertex. So therefore, it's opposite of b over 2a. And then just like what I have here, when I say f of 0, that means you're going to plug in 0 for all your x values. Well, for your vertex, now you need to plug in what your axis of symmetry value is. So f of opposite of b over 2a. And that's going to be your vertex. So if I say that the x value is 3 fourths, then now what I need to do is I need to plug in f of 3 fourths to find the other side of my vertex. So f of 3 fourths is going to give me 4 times 3 fourths squared <coughs> minus 6 times 3 fourths times 3. All right, and I know it gets fractions. I know everybody wants to convert to decimals. But if we just go ahead and work on this, we can get through it. So um, 3 4 squared, you just square the top and the bottom. So it's going to equal 4 times 9 16 minus, you can multiply um, this across. It's going to be 18 fourths and then minus 3. OK, and then multiply across here so you get 36 6 36 sixteenths minus 18 fourths minus 3. And for those of you that forget how to multiply fractions, um, what you need to go ahead and do is you need to get them all to be common denominators. So it looks like our common denominator is going to be 16, correct? So therefore, to get this to be 16, I need to multiply by 4 over 4. And this to get 16, I need to multiply, that's a 1 on the bottom of there. You need to multiply this by 16 over 16. So therefore, I get 36 or 16 minus um, 36 is going to be 72 over 16. And then we got 32, we got minus 48 over 16. All right. And I'm not just going to go and figure out the math, but I think um, you get, uh, what was your final decimal? Five and a quarter, was it? Yeah. Negative. Negative five and a quarter. Negative five and a quarter. Okay. So you guys can go and check your math. Go ahead and do that. And you get negative five 
and um, point one fourth. All right, so we're just going to leave that in decimal form, 5.25. So therefore, now my vertex is what the lot, what the axis of symmetry is, or the line of symmetry, which is um, three fourths and negative 5.25. Okay, so that's your vertex. Yeah, I know it's a lot of work, but you know it's the fractions of the fractions called. Like I said, guys, a lot of you can just put in the decimal point and figure it out, or put it as a decimal and figure it out real quick. Um, so now you found the axis of symmetry, which is very basic, just this formula. The vertex is you find the axis of symmetry and then plug it into your equation to find the other point. Uh, we found the y-intercept, which is probably the easiest. And now the last thing is we need to determine is that a maximum or a minimum, and what is the domain and range? So I'm actually going to erase this because you guys have it on video so you can go back. And let's go ahead and look at, is it a maximum or a minimum? Well, right now I have no idea what this graph looks like. If I was going to write this graph, all I know is the vertex is at 3 fourths, negative 5.25, which is roughly, I'm just going to put like somewhere right there. And I, we know that it crosses the y-intercept at, crap, what was the y-intercept at? Do I remember? Negative three. Negative three. OK, so right now I have no idea what this graph. I don't know if it goes down like this or it goes up like there. Um, but one of the tests we have is if a is greater, if a is greater than 0, which is a, this term right here, therefore we know that the graph is going to continue up. So therefore your vertex is a minimum point. And if A is less than 0, then your vertex is a max. So since my A is greater than 0, I know that this is a minimum point. So right now, all I know is my graph is going to look something like this. I don't know where it crosses the y-axis. That's what we're going to learn in another video. Or where it crosses the, yeah, the x-axis. But at least I know it goes to the vertex. And the line of symmetry is at 3 fourths, so that's where it's like equal distance. So if I was going to graph this kind of correctly. It's equal distance on both sides from your line of symmetry. It crosses at the y-intercept, and there's your vertex. So my domain, as this graph keeps on going up, it gets wider and wider. So my domain is going to be all real values. As this graph keeps on going farther up, it's getting wider and wider. So we like to say from negative infinity to infinity. That's your domain. Domain is all the, the range of all the x values that um, that uh, makes your graph true. Then you have your range is all your y values. So obviously we know this goes up to infinity up in the y value, but how far down does it go? Negative 5.25. So the lowest point in your range is negative 5.25, and the highest point is positive infinity. All right. So that is how you go ahead and determine the y-intercepts, axis symmetry, vertex, if it's a maximum minimum, and the domain range for a function.